I'm Annette Admati, a finance and economics professor at GSB. I founded Cassie in summer 2018, and I was and still am uh, a faculty director of Cassie, now joined by my colleague, uh, good friend, and uh, since uh, spring 2020, um, the other co the faculty director of Cassie. We're here uh, to record a conversation with the inaugural staff director of CASI, who was here from the start and spent the last three years and four months here at GSB, uh, who was nominated and confirmed uh, as an assistant treasury secretary for financial institutions, uh, and therefore is leaving us uh, to go uh, back to government where it came from. So we would like to record a few minutes of insights from Graham uh, about his time at GSB and some other observations that he might want to share with us. So Paul and I will conduct this conversation and we're very excited to, uh, to have this opportunity with Graham. So Graham, let me start by asking you a little bit about your background um, before coming uh, to the GSB. Sure, uh, thanks a lot. Um... Well, I'm a sort of a public servant through and through. Uh, I decided I wanted to do something in government um, around around when I was eight years old. Uh, I'm from the Boston, Massachusetts area. My neighbor was running for president of the United States. He was the Democratic nominee for president, and every day in my neighborhood was a civics lesson with you know public servants coming through and the media and um, and the race was really um, in my neighborhood. Uh, and since so ever since then, that was 1988, uh, I, I thought I wanted to be in Washington and, and doing some kind of government public service work. I'm a lawyer by training. I went to law school in DC um, and then started working at a nonprofit advocacy organization. The financial crisis of 2008 hit um, and I went to work on, on financial services issues specifically trying to sort of clean up the mess that was caused by that financial crisis. Worked in the United States Senate um, for a member of the Senate Banking Committee for about eight years, uh, and then moved out, out to the Bay Area, was working at the Reserve Bank when you called me up uh, in in the spring of 2018 and said I'm starting an initiative at, at Stanford GSB, and would you like to come work with me? Yes, we've known each other now for, we counted, about 11 years. Uh, and so uh, when the position became available, uh, I immediately uh, thought of you and so lucky uh, that I was able to get you here. Uh, so why were you interested in, uh, in coming to, uh, to Stanford and help me start uh, this initiative? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it was, it was uh, an opportunity of a lifetime, I think. As you said, we met about 11 years ago. I think you were briefing the, the, the staff for the Senate Banking Committee, uh, and you were telling us all um, about all of the, all the sort of the self-interested arguments that bank lobbyists were coming through and telling us. Uh, and then you were sort of giving us a tutorial lesson, uh, a free business school finance class about how corporate finance actually works uh, and debunking a lot of the, the myths and flawed claims that they were presenting to us. And so, um, I was really struck by the model that you set for us about what um, what sort of disinterested expertise and analysis looks like. Um, and it really instilled in me while I was doing my Senate job um, to do better than just listen to people when they were coming in with self-interested arguments, to get outside of the DC bubble and try to seek out more voices um, and, and sort of try to do my job better and be more informed. And um, from meeting you and seeing the work that you were doing from the times you had me out to sort of visit, speak in some of your classes at GSB and see what the community there was like. I mean, it's an amazing school with lots of brilliant people, the faculty, but also the students. Um, and so I was really excited to sort of carry through the work that you had, had sort of started, you know, a decade ago. Yeah, and Paul was my collaborator on some of it. And I think you interacted with him too at that uh, point. Yeah, no, he um, he testified in the Senate Banking Committee. Um, maybe that was 2011, I think. Um, so you two were, were, were definitely some of the, the independent experts that we called on a lot uh, to help us do our jobs. So, Graham, let me pick up on uh, something that's always interested me. Uh, you have a obviously very varied background and have interacted with uh, politicians, regulators, uh, obviously faculty members. 
But uh, I would guess that this was your first time to uh, formally interact with students. Uh, obviously, you did when you were a student. But that turned out to be one of the strong roles you played here at the at the GSB through Cassie, uh, because as, uh, as as everyone knows who knows anything about Cassie, uh, students are very much involved in this. So I just ask you a question: uh, Given that you've had this time to interact with students here at the GSB, uh, we call them future leaders, and indeed uh, they will be. Are are you optimistic about the future when you have? Uh, seen the students and their dedication to uh, many of the issues that Cassie addresses. Uh, how, do you, how do you look back on uh, this experience uh, with the student interactions that you had? Absolutely, it's a great question. Um, and it's, I was not used to working with students when I came to the school. And um, I mean, to, to put it bluntly, these, the students that I've met give me a lot of hope about the future. I mean, um, there, there are a lot of intractable intractable problems out there, some caused by corporations, some caused by government, you know, some caused by other parties. Uh, but the degree to which the students at the GSB really think about those problems, want to, in the first instance, not contribute to them further when they go out into their careers, um, and the number of them that have come to me, I'm, I'm sort of seen as the public sector of the government guy. Um, a lot of students come and want to talk about what that's like um, maybe how they can find a higher purpose in their lives, uh, either in the private sector or in the public sector. Um, the questions they're asking themselves, the way that they're challenging themselves about how, how to go into careers that don't cause problems, um, what their roles can be, um, you know, if they want to go into the public sector, you know, what their role could be like in the private sector, how to be change agents within the organizations they go into, whatever that looks like. Um, that part of it makes me really optimistic. I also think that they just, you know, I'm, I was used to meeting in my old job, a lot of executives who are more mature in the late, latter stages of their career, they look at the world in one particular way. I think the students at the GSB, I mean, the school itself has a reputation for trying to instill a broader social ethos um, in, in the future leaders. But I think even the students that I have met um, just have a much different perspective than those sort of later stage leaders that I had met when I was in BC in my time there. They seem much more civically minded, much more, um, um, much more societally interested rather than purely self-interested. So I have to ask a follow-up question. As anyone watching this video can see in my gray hair, I'm a, I'm a baby boomer. I grew up in the 60s and during that time, uh, the youth were very idealistic and wanting to make change, but uh, arguably the generation that I belong to uh, didn't do too good a job, uh, potentially gets blamed for a lot of the problems we face today. Do you worry, Graham, that uh, the students, uh, with all their fervor now, uh, that that may dissipate and when they turn 40 or 50 are going to be potentially part of the problem as opposed to the solution? Sure. It's a great question. And it's a, that's a challenge again. It's another one of those challenges that confronts leaders both, I think, in the private and public sectors, how not to become cynical, how not to become jaded, um, you know, how to how to keep asking those tough questions and challenging yourself. But I really think that's one of the things that excited me about the initiative was um, trying to create a new model for business education where these students actually don't end up in that in that track, you know, 10, 20 years down the line, that they're continually um, they've learned how to ask themselves the tough questions, how to keep challenging themselves in their future roles they go into so they don't just sort of end up complacent or end up cynical and jaded. And, um, you know, I, I wonder sometimes for those leaders in the second stage of their career, I wonder how many of them experience a third stage of their career, which is regret about, you know, looking back and sort of thinking, did I cause these problems? Did I contribute to them? Um, and, and I think one of the things that we are trying to do here is to prevent students from, from, you know, 30, 40 years down the line looking back and thinking, I wish someone had just taught me a little bit more about, you know, what, what the pot potential future impact of the, of the work that I'm going to do really, really could have been. So on the, on the part of the students, how did students become uh, so engaged and sort of how did Cassie become the kind of hybrid uh, that it is, is really because uh, as a faculty, I started, uh, first engaging with the faculty, but uh, the students actually sought me out and wanted more engagement on these issues. And so by the time, you know, we had created Cassie, there were already 
leaders in place that I've been talking with that whole year prior to Cassie's introduction. And so they were immediately going into leadership role into their second year because I was interacting with them in their first year. And so, uh, and since then I've talked to many more students. And so uh, I, I feel again, that they really are attuned and a subset of them at least, but, but also want to work with their classmates to kind of make big picture more of the, of the norm, of the habit around here, whatever they end up doing and that we want to plant those seeds. So now, um, as faculty, I also uh, kept wanting to uh, not just nudge the faculty to be thinking about these things as they all are interested in publishing their papers and and uh, and advancing their their academic careers and doing their teaching and all this stuff. But we wanted Cassie to enable them to engage more in policy, and that was something also that Graham you were involved in. So uh, so talk a little bit about your interaction with some of the faculty you, uh, here. Yeah, uh, absolutely. That, that's been a real pleasure um, just because there are so many brilliant people on the faculty at GSB. Unsurprisingly, it's a top, it's a top business school. So understandably, the faculty is top notch as well. Um, I think, um, well, first of all, I think stepping back from purely talking about the faculty, I think the school itself, there was a real desire in, in the policymaking world to actually hear from Stanford and what it has to offer. The school itself is in the middle, um, just by virtue of its geographic location of so many issues that are on the forefront of what policymakers are thinking about right now. So I think there really is a there's a there's a demand side part of this, which is people in the policy world really do want to hear from folks at GSB about what they think about things. Um, but I think you touched on something, which is that my one of my sort of very superficial observations about um, academia is that the incentives don't necessarily align to encourage people to do that. You know, it, it, it very much is. Um, if you're tenure track, it is to publish so you can get tenure. And so it very much is on research publication. And I, and I haven't seen a whole lot of um, ways in which the formal curriculum or the tenure process really incentivizes them to go out and make a broader impact on the broader world. It seems, my impression is that that is a nice thing to have. It is not a must have uh, within a business school. And so, but, but, but I also, in as much as there is interest in the outside world and having the GSB faculty get engaged, what I've seen in just, you know, the three plus years that I've been there is that there is also interest on the faculty side in doing stuff. I mean, we got good interest in some of our events, you know, some folks beyond just the two of you, some of your colleagues hosted, hosted visiting speakers for us. They contributed in some of the, the policy comment processes that we led. Um, you know, we had some great debates about things like COVID and the CARES Act with some of your colleagues. And so there really does seem to be an interest in, in talking about some of the, the policy issues that are top of mind right now. Um, but an important thing, and I think I think a thing that I think we have tried to do with the initiative is to lower the barriers to entry and lower the cost for them to do that. So it is to, to sort of think about and plan the events and then sort of give them a chance to either attend them or to help us moderate them or to be speakers and panelists at them. Um, to help them understand how how the policy comment and, and, and policy making process works so that it's easier for them to participate. So it very much, you know, I think if you sort of lower those lower those costs and make it easier for them to get involved, I think they want to do it. I think there is a desire, and that's one of the things that we've tried to do here. So as Anat mentioned, uh, we're having this conversation because you're uh, going to be in transition, uh, leaving uh, us here at Stanford and Cassie, much to our regret because you played such an amazing role here, but moving on to take a position in the treasury. And at this point, I will call you the Honorable Graham Steele uh, because you have been confirmed by the Senate. But uh, thinking about that, uh, what when you look back, have you learned, uh, what lessons might you take away from the time you've spent here that you think might serve you well in your new role uh, in the Treasury Department. Yeah, um, I think I think I have learned a lot. I think it's going to be hard to narrow it down and be uh, kind of succinct about it. I think two things that I would say we've already touched on. Um, one is getting to meet the students themselves. It has given me a more um, nuanced appreciation that the business community is not a monolith, and so. Um, if I want to, in in my future role, get a sense for um, what 
the those communities think about some of the work that we're going to be doing, um, I now feel like it's incumbent upon myself to seek out more voices to affirmatively to not just meet the ones that come to D.C. I think there's a sort of probably an adverse selection problem with who's coming in and wants to get in front of some of the some of the folks in the policymaking process. So I'm going to want to um, whether it's specifically the, the students that I've interacted with at GSB who are now in business roles and talk to them directly, um, I now know that there are people like that out there um, and there, there are more voices and, and, and I think I'll try to, try to find those people so I get a more, um, a, a better sense of the sort of nuanced views and the more diverse views that are out there within the business community. So I think that's number one. I think number two, um, this is a thing that goes back from the early days of when I met Anat and when she came to the Senate Banking Committee, but it, it's held true throughout my time at GSB, um, talking to you, talking to your colleagues on the, on the finance faculty is um, being willing to challenge a lot of the, the sort of self-interested arguments and sort of seeing politics differently, um, that it is, it is not just doing the things that those groups that are coming in and lobbying for um, the policy doesn't need to just necessarily meet their needs. It is to ask the basic questions about, are we doing the right thing here? Do we have all the facts? Um, because I think um, there's a lot of short-term thinking in policymaking, which is I'm just going to do the thing that the person who's, who's in front of me is telling me that they want done to solve this particular problem. I think that solves the short-term problem of making the squeakiest wheels, sort of greasing those wheels. But I think it, those sorts of policy fixes create more problems over the long term um and and i think by not my, not talking to a broader range of voices and not considering the long-term implications of some of the policy things you're thinking about i think that's when you get yourself into long-term political trouble so so right now politics is thought of very much in the thought the short term rather than the long term so those are things i'm excited to take with me and i think those were invaluable lessons um before we finish up maybe i could turn the questioning back on the two of you because I'm I'm leaving now. It's a new chapter for the initiative, but you are taking it here, um, and the initiative has grown a lot just in the three years that I've been there. So, I'm curious to hear from both of you who are continuing to be the faculty directors of Cassie. Where what are you excited about now in this moment about where the initiative is going or where you'd like it to go? Well, you start. So uh, first of all, uh, and, and again, uh, because uh, this is uh, centered around you, Graham, I want to say how much I realize the, the value of having someone with your expertise being able to interact with, with us, with the faculty, and with students. And uh, so I think uh, this, is a, this is a major point, actually, as we, as we think about expanding uh, what we're doing here at the GSB uh, with the Cassie Initiative. I think uh, bringing in people with expertise such as you have in the law, uh, but experience in, uh, in, in, in government is, 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 is critical. So uh, I, I would hope that as we move forward, uh, we're probably not gonna be able to replace you, you're irreplaceable, but that we find people with the vector of skills that, that, that you bring. Uh, and I, I, I think we just need to be flexible the uh, the world is evolving and the challenges are are, are huge and we'll get uh, students coming in with particular interests uh, and interacting with people that uh, have have knowledge and what we should be looking at so i think having a having a particular concrete plan is 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 not what we want to do i think we just want to be open to uh, how things are evolving and, and and make sure we have a broad spectrum of people with expertise from a broad uh, spectrum of areas uh, serving us uh, and, and, and advising us. So that would be uh, maybe a little bit of a non-answer, but uh, that would be how I would be thinking about it. So I would add uh, uh, that uh, I really hope that we are able to follow through on some of the things that uh, that you actually, Graham, got started, uh, and that some of which as concepts uh, predate you here, uh, which is, for example, continuing on this tradition of just helping bring our expertise in front of, uh, of decision makers and the broader public is sort of the broad education mission of CASI. Um, 
and you have explored uh, the possibility of starting uh, programs that mean to bring specific uh, educational uh, programming to, to policymakers specific on areas where the business school is a unique source of, uh, of uh, uh, expertise and wisdom sets, such as, for example, finance and accounting, and, um, and design those programs and, and make them work for, for, for everybody. And so on that, I hope we can pick it up and that we have the sort of capabilities to to run them potentially jointly with other other schools uh, interested in 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 this uh, this space sort of between business and law and and uh, and policy and uh, and that we can expand uh, in many ways our outreach uh, that uh, that we were able to begin to do uh, both to communities in the GSB and uh, and way beyond the GSB in policy, in the media and in uh, in society as a whole to kind of bring in, you know, this sort of diagn ability to diagnose issues that can be addressed uh, collectively and get to the right solutions for those uh, challenges that uh, that we face as a society. So therefore, the, you know, the sort of perceived crisis of capitalism, perceived crisis in democracies can be helped, that we can help uh, address these crises rather than, uh, you know, God forbid, be, be, be part of why we have those, uh, those crises. So therefore, you know, get at the civic-minded leadership and all these other concepts that we've been advan advancing kind of more, more out there within our community and beyond. So, uh, you know, we will keep uh, in touch with you. I know you'll be swallowed by your new job, but uh, we'll remain here and, um, and we will uh, see how we all uh, keep pushing the 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 missions uh that the very intertwined missions that we have uh uh to to continue working in the you know previous iterations the most recent iterations and and in the future thank you so much for being part of this uh endeavor for as long as uh, as we had you here which was really a blessing uh for us and uh, good luck graham thank you both for the opportunity it's been a, a pleasure working with both of you Yes, all good wishes for success and a uh, great deal of gratitude to you for uh, all that you brought to the GSB and to Cassie while you were here. Thank you.